Now we can relate the empirical formula to the molecular formula. The empirical is the simplest ratio, molar ratio of atoms in the formula. Um, and now we can look at the molecular, which is just going to be some whole number multiple of each of those subscripts. This will make a little more sense in, in a second. So in this problem, um, they give you an empirical formula. Let's say the empirical formula is C3H4. And they want to know um, what the molecular formula is given the molecular weight. Okay. So we know this is the empirical formula. We need to find the molecular formula. I'm just going to make like a little box here to help keep us organized. We'll have empirical information on top and then molecular on the bottom. And the molecular is always going to be bigger than the empirical because the empirical is the simplest one. So they give us the uh, molecular weight of the molecular formula. They say that's 121 atomic mass units. And we can figure this part out because we know the empirical formula, so we can find the molecular uh, weight of the empirical formula. So again, we're just going to use how we've been doing this all the time. We have three carbons. Each carbon is like 12.01. And then we have four hydrogens, and each one is 1.01. And so that ends up being uh, you know, about 40, 40.0, was that 7? Yeah, so now that's the empirical formula. So we need to figure out how many of these units do we have in the molecular formula um, based on the, the molecular weight of the molecular formula. Oh, there's a lot of moleculars in this sentence here. So basically, we're going to take a ratio of these. If I have 121 um, atomic mass units in the whole thing, and each individual piece is about uh, 40.7, that means I have three of these units. So here I have 40.07, so I have three. So basically I have three times as many of each one of these um, atoms. So I have C, instead of three, I actually have three times three, which is nine, and H I have four times three, is 12. So my final molecular formula is C9H12. So to break that down, all I had to do was figure out the empirical formula. Sorry, they give you the empirical formula. I have to find the um, molar mass or the molecular weight of the empirical formula, compare it to the molar mass of the um, molecular formula, and then take the ratio, you get some whole number, and then multiply the subscripts. So if you're curious how you come up with these mass percents that we were doing in the previous problem, um, not, not the one before this one, <clears throat> you can set up a combustion analysis. For combustion, again, you're just taking some kind of like hydrocarbon and blasting it with a whole bunch of oxygen inside a furnace, um, and then you collect the products. So if you have your sample, which has like carbon and hydrogen, oxygen, whatever you have in that sample, you um, react it with oxygen, and then you collect your products. Remember, combustion, you always get the same products, water and carbon dioxide. So you can collect them here. You just weigh this before, and then you weigh it after. And then all of the hydrogen that was in your sample is now in the water. All of the carbon that was in your sample is now in the um, carbon dioxide. The oxygen, you have to figure out based on how much of the mass that you started with for your, your sample, because you are adding some um, hydrogen, or you're adding some oxygen with the, um, right here as one of your reactants. So this is just, we're not going to go in depth here, but this is just, um, you can read more about it in the book too, combustion analysis, how you can get all those mass percents from your sample. So again, you have an unknown sample in here, and then all of the carbon from your sample gets turned into carbon dioxide, all the hydrogen gets turned into water, and then you just take the masses. Let's try one more um, mass percent problem and relate it to uh, find the empirical formula, and then um, using the molar mass of the molecular formula, find uh, the, the molecular formula. All right, so again, pause the video and, and work on this on your own. But we're going to, step one, you take all these percents, assume you have a 100 gram sample, and so all those percents get turned into grams. That's my carbon. And I have 5.15 grams of hydrogen. I have 28.9 grams of nitrogen. I have 16.5 grams of oxygen. And now I'm just going to divide by their molar masses. This is 12.01, one mole. 1.01 .01 one mole. 14.01 to one mole. And 16. 
one mole. So I'm going to convert all of those to moles. So I have 4.125, 5.15, 2.06, and 1.03. So that's all my moles. Now I want to get the simplest molar ratio. So I'm going to divide by the smallest number of moles. That's going to set one of these to one. And 1.03, which gives me about four. Uh, and so my my simplest molar ratio or my empirical formula, I have C H N O. I have four carbons, I have five hydrogens, I have one nitrogen, or sorry, two nitrogens and one oxygen. So that is the empirical formula. And now what they want us to do is find the molecular formula. So given the empirical formula, which we have right here, this is C. 4H5N2O, and they also gave us the molar mass of the molecular formula. If we scroll up there, they tell you that's 194.22. This time they gave us the um, molar mass. The last problem we did, they gave us the molecular weight. You can do it either way because it's the same number, just different units. Are you talking about a mole of things or are you talking about one molecule? So now to figure out what the um, here down here what the molecular formula is we'd have to find the molar mass of the empirical formula so that's going to be 4 times 12.01 we should be like experts at this now 1.01 2 times 14.01 and then 16 and when you work all that out I'm est estimating here it's about 97 all right, so this is about 97 and it's okay because you're rounding so you don't need an exact number um, so the next step you're going to do basically 194.22 uh, divided by 97 and some change and you get about 2 is so now you're going to take that number and multiply by all the subscripts so we're going to have c8 so basically this is saying i have twice as many of all these elements here so if this weighs 97 then i just double all the elements here i have twice as many carbon H10 and 4O2 and that is your um, the molecular formula of your um, yeah molecular formula so do a, a bunch of homework problems just like that and you should be fine